We did that earlier. We had stream problems. We shouted for the gun run, and he magically appeared. Right. There we go. Connection is back. How wonderful. He is like he is like the genie of live streams. Yeah. If anything ever happens, he just magically appears, grants you three wishes, and then disappears again as quickly as he came. Yeah, apparently they all missed Husky's tail, which uh, was a terrible thing indeed. You should probably repeat that. I, I think it just came down to your parents were supportive of the whole esports thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, when uh, when I my, my first year of doing StarCraft commentaries, I had like... I, th I think the highest I got was like 10,000 subs, something like that, which uh, back then was it was pretty pretty awesome. Um, if you compare it to how big gaming is now in general, not even not just StarCraft, but uh, other gaming channels as well. I mean, I don't know if you ever heard of uh, the Yogg's Cast, but uh, they're <laughs> they're kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, and, and gaming in general on YouTube is just awesome right now. And uh, so, anyways, back then I, I only had like 10,000 subs, and uh, it was like between five and ten. I don't remember exactly. But uh, I kind of decided I, I wasn't a big fan of college, so I just want to kind of do my, my own thing. And my parents were totally supportive, even though I had yet to make like a single dollar. They were just like, well, you're having fun. You can live here and do this for as long as you want. So uh, my parents always, always had my back from the start, which I think is something that actually would not be that common. Like if you think about your parents and you're like, oh, no, I have like this little following and I play video games all day. I have a feeling that most parents wouldn't be like, go get them, Tiger. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when I you know, visited my parents and uh, came back there for the weekend or whatever, or I came over Sunday at lunch, I think that it, it became sort of more real to them when I started pulling in, you know, reasonable paychecks and just saying, hey, look, you know, I could either go back and work a terrible job in an office or I could do this, which is making me more money and is more fun. So, you know, what? I think I'm going to do that. But I think it helped that I went through university and I got my degree and then I'm like, right, okay, I've got my degree. Now I can do whatever the hell I want. It's all good. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I always tell people, like, while I didn't finish college, I think that you should definitely go to college for something that you enjoy. I, I, I have always believed that you shouldn't, because um, there's this kind of belief that you should work now for the next 40 years, and then you get to have fun when you retire. I, I feel like I should have fun now because yeah. I'm young and healthy. And uh, you, you should definitely focus on what you want to do. And also, um, a lot of people, I mean, since we're in the esports industry, a lot of people do ask, well, how can I get involved? It's so daunting to start when you know there's already such important people there doing a lot of stuff um i, I just say just just go out and do it and uh, find a way to make yourself valuable because there's always something that's not being done it, it may not seem like it but there's there's definitely an interesting spin uh that, that you can put on anything you do so whether it's writing for a website making your own website um hosting your own little tournaments doing barcraft or something you just gotta go out there and do it and uh, I think it's kind of with any job that if you want to be self-employed, it's going to be a lot of work, and you don't get a lot out of it for the first couple of years. But uh, it, it is worth it. Trust me, you don't have to torture yourself at your horrible job forever, I promise. No, 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 you do not. Just work at it and uh, see how it goes. I mean, to be honest, that's, I think, what we did for the longest time. We did it as a part-time hobby. I did the whole podcasting thing for like six years and then did the videos yes. part-time and then was able to make it full-time from there. Just got to work at it. You've just got to persist. There is no magical quick fix to suddenly being able to make a full-time job out of this. You've just got to work at it, pay your dues, and keep being consistent for your fans and building that base of people that want to see your stuff every single day. And that's how you get successful. That, there is no magical potion that lets you do that. So very true, and uh, really quickly, since the the stream died, um, as I was saying, I think during while the stream was dying, I uh, I did post the, a link to this on my Facebook and Twitter, and I, I think a lot of my fans know of you, but they may not know too much about either what you do or kind of what this show's about. So if there's anything for uh, my fans out there that you want to tell them, just to maybe try and reel them into your show, what uh what what is the show all about? Yeah, I'm glad that we're very, very honest about what we're trying to do here. Okay, this is the part where we cross-promote here, and then we're going to cross-promote over here, and this is how marketing works. There you go, Marketing 101. <laughs> it, it's good, you know, we're very honest and open about what we're trying to do here. So, whatever the case, Showcraft is a stream that I do three times a week at 1900 GMT on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and it's a variety show. We do all sorts of different things. We do some 
1v1, laddering, where we try and focus on some more unorthodox strategies. We do some 2v2 with various people from the community. We also do some coaching. Last week, we coached with Liquid Chef, who convinced me to switch to Zerg. Week before that, we coached Protoss with Desro, and we've got all sorts of other coaches lined up for the next few weeks. And sometimes we just bring on really cool people, like Husky, to play some 2v2s and some customs and do a little bit of commentary. I do some commentary for my subscribers. I'll do commentary of all levels, whether it be Bronze or Grandmaster, show some really cool replays, play some custom games, and we even got a quiz show on Friday, so it's everything you could possibly imagine about StarCraft jammed into one show. Right on, man. Yeah, I wish that uh, I could have tuned in. I don't know I don't know how you find the time to do it three days a week, but that is awesome. How, uh, how long are your shows usually? Are they like a couple hours? Because when, when I logged in today to uh, do some games with you, you said you've already been already been doing it for an hour. Yeah, so. for an hour. That, it, it depends. Sometimes it can go on for ages. I and mean, it, it, I think the longest show's dragged on for about three and a half hours because I just keep playing. Uh, and it's like, oh, right, let's, let's do this now. Let's do this. I don't know. It's, it's okay to do it three times a week. I'm really busy with the other stuff on the channel. The main channel over at youtube.com slash Total Halibut is, of course, the variety gaming channel, which is all about previewing and first impressions content of games that you may not have heard of, as well as daily mailbox podcasts, which is my opinion about various different issues of gaming and League of Legends stuff, Battlefield 3, all sorts of different things. So I, I like to try and have a new game on there every day. Right on, man. You are you are the workhorse of the internet. You, uh, I think you release more videos than I do. So I try. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like you actually have three of you who are just working nonstop around the clock to get this stuff out. Shh! Don't tell them. The secret. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. I was I was not actually supposed to say that. That is so true. You're a horrible person. Horrible person. I I can always trust you to be oh so honest. Of course, of course. That's what I'm good at. Do we have time for a custom game of sorts? Uh, yeah. If you want to sure. do something, what, I, uh, what customs do you I'm like? So down the, the the main thing I have to do today is get a haircut. So okay. I feel like I still have a, a little bit of time to get the haircut because if there's one thing I love, it's waking up to thousands of messages talking about my hair after an MLG, <laughs> which apparently. Uh, it, it's usually not something you would think guys would focus on about other guys, but turns out that's that's what they it's care about. It's a big deal. So, yeah. yeah, it's a big deal. You be su you would be surprised how many guy fans there are that focus on your appearance. It's a little bit crazy. I can understand it for female fans, certainly, but yeah, it's just, it's kind of weird, isn't it? it? But it does happen. It does. It does indeed creep me out. Um, as far as custom games, um. I mostly play Nexus Wars, but that's hella boring to watch. Uh, I do yep. like Mono Battles. Um, that that one's always that one's always probably the most requested one that my fans like watching. And have you have you experienced the Mono Battle? I know what it is, but I've never played it. I we, we could do that if you want. Let's to. do that. People yeah. people love that, but uh, it's also a four v four, so I don't know we if you want to play in... with strangers. Oh, we can we can bring or... in some players from the channel. That sounds like an idea. We can just set up the game, and then we'll let people know when it's open, and then they can mash the join button. It'll be wonderful. Yes, I am so down for Mono okay. Um, One thing is, uh, if you find the Day 9 version, if you just search for Day 9, um, that one usually has less people joining, so you can usually get more people from the stream. All right. Uh, that's usually right. I'm, I'm, try I'm trying to find the Day 9 version at the moment. I'm just searching through its Mono Battles... Yeah, da, 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 da. Hmm, Megaton Mono Battles, Team Mono Battles. I actually can't find the Day 9 version. I don't know where it is. Um, let's see. If you go to, uh, I usually go to join rather than create. Uh -huh. And if you just type in Mono, just M O N O, um, okay. it'll be the fifth one down. Let us see. And I think that. Aha! There it is, yes. Um, unfortunately, they're map like making custom games and stuff is horrible so yes. sometimes it's hard to get the fans in but uh yep okay well if you want to join you should join right now be quick about it because it's filling up rapidly and also make sure to change your race uh it does affect which race you spawn as in the game i will i guess stick with terran so we got woobly so i think we're in pretty good shape Yep. 
Alright, All right, so basically, I, I'm sure you know how this one works, but you can only, you pick one unit, and that's the only attacking unit you can make throughout the entire game. Um, you can make detectors. Uh, I don't think you can make ravens. But, oh, uh, that's unfortunate. I love ravens. Um, unless you pick ravens, of course. But um, you yeah, you can only make that one unit, and workers, and buildings. Hmm. I might so do it's, ravens. It's quite interesting. And if you do something like uh, uh, an archon, you, you can warp in Dark Templar, but they can't attack. Uh -huh. And if you yeah. do Bane Links, you can make Zerglings, but they can't attack, which is... It's always highly interesting to see people like... It's like, oh god, I'm going to get killed by 800 Zerglings. Oh, they don't actually attack. So I can just yep. kill all these oh, I could do Battle Cruiser. That would be amusing, but... That's always a good one. Right? Yeah. I, I think we're doing Battle Cruiser. We've got to do it for the Cynical Fleet. It's got to happen. We've got so many Battle Cruisers in the chat, so... We're going Battle Cruiser. That's the way to do it. I got Zerg, so I think I'm going to go... I'm gonna go for Muta. So our wow. So basically, what we have is we all have a problem. high tier stuff. We're we're gonna die. And what they have <laughs> is all. Yeah, we are we are pretty much pretty much screwed. Yeah. Um, the first unit we can get out is a ghost. Wonderful. This will be great. But but sometimes it doesn't it doesn't go the way you think it will. So we'll we'll see. But it, it usually does. So, right. Well, I have an I have an optimum strategy for building battle cruisers. I can build battle cruisers faster than anyone in the industry. So we're good. That I hope so, because we are going to need them at about the two minute mark. So I'm counting okay. on you. Right. No problem. Trust. You'll be fine. Two minute battle cruisers. <laughs> Here we go. What's going on? Oh man, so I, I love. It's it's funny. One time I did a. Uh, because some of the unit compositions that come out are just, like, hilarious. Um, there was one where they had Viking, Corruptor, uh, Phoenix. And I just had Marines, and I, I killed all four of them, basically, because they had no anti-ground. It was all just, like, anti-air. Yep. If we wall off with 5,000 buildings, it will take them a while to kill them, and then we shall succeed. The problem is going to be the Reapers in our base. Yes, that that, that could be an do not, issue. Do not care about the wall in that we have. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe they'll be nice and not rush right away. Well, if probably we can, not though. Probably not. Yeah. If we can get the creep everywhere and then just cover the base in spine crawlers, we should be safe for the moment. This is true. I, I just am predicting the future, and I see mini drones dying to Hellions and Reapers, and it is it is a bleak future at best. Well, we're three oh, minutes we... in, and we're not dead yet. That's a start. Need... Okay, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to expand. Oops, that was an accidental ping. We Never mind. Ignore that. Hmm, if I can find a place to hide an expansion, that would be wonderful. But I don't think that's gonna happen yet. All right, so I can't build anything out of that whatsoever, right? Straight into factory. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can't build anything out of there. Yeah. Um, you can only do the add-on. Yep. And uh, yeah. It's funny as Zerg because your larva can only build like drones, overlords, and the unit that you picked. Yep. If I, if I can survive until I get a BC out, we will be in a wonderful position. Standard one base battle cruiser opening. Hey, I've seen the little one do it way back in the day. It's doable, man. It's doable. Is that, is that a strategy that you would utilize on your stream? Just yeah, I, I do it. I do it. It's good. <laughs> Why? Will it not uh, let me build mules? No, there we go. It was. Yeah, mules and scans, I think you could do. Yeah. Alright, starport coming down. Have we got ghosts yet? Has he managed to build some ghosts? Oh, he's got his Ghost Academy coming up right now. I always forget just how cheap the Ghost Academy is. I always forget that it's 50 gas. Yeah, that it's not too bad. I have supply block, but it doesn't really matter at this point, because I can't build anything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling that one of us should have picked Marine, honestly, at this point. I'm thinking oh yeah, that. Marine? Marine and Stalker are way OP in this. Yep. My timing is fairly optimal at the moment. 
for starting VC any moment. The problem is trying to expand on one base battle cruiser is quite tricky because they take a. Oh dear! Apparently we're going to be attacked quite soon. That's not so good. Do we have a ghost? Okay, we. Uh, I think he's building. No. Yes. Yes, he's building ghosts. Good. Right. Where do we need to wall off? All right, we got the one ghost, but does he have cloaking? No, he doesn't. Probably not. I'm going to use my factory to start walling off here. Okay, BC is coming out very soon. So don't build any more units. Okay, first BC on the way, and I can expand as well. That's wonderful. Alright, don't tell anyone, but I expanded to the high yield. Does the job, bro. Our allies are being... Oh, oh, they found it. No, they didn't like that. This is unfortunate. Yes, I, I could throw SCVs at them and see if they're distracted. I haven't got my battle cruiser yet. I'm working on it. It's about halfway done. Oh god, the Reapers. Uh, I feel like this is the lost cause. Uh, he's... Move your ghosts to the bunkers. He, uh, actually, the, the ghost almost dealt with it. Uh, all, to, all credit to him, but he did just lose a lot, which is unfortunate. Another BC on the way. It's unfortunate that he's got stalkers. These guys are tryhards. These guys are actually trying to play properly. How dare they? Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Yeah, man. Well, what a total buzzkill. Absolutely. First BC is up. I feel that BC is optimum yes. counter to Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it could do okay versus the Hellion, but they're kind of speedy little buggers. Oh, there's something coming out of the back. Uh, Force of Hellions over there. I will move to intercept. I think the decision to choose Ultralisk was, I would say, not so awesome. You know what we could do? We could stop building planetary fortresses everywhere. That that would be pretty good. They don't have a, a hard counter to that. It's okay. My battle cruiser has count is countering the Hellions very slowly. Uh, yeah. Our base is Gas count looking okay. Our right. Let me send a battle cruiser over there. Draw them towards the BC. It's a trap. Oh dear. The <laughs> stalkers coming over there. That's oh, all right. We have cloaked ghosts, and they have actually no way to detect them at the moment. This is going well for us. All right. I am oh, yeah, we're still in this. Yep. I am going to go expand over there. Alright, I'm moving my battle cruiser into a defensive position over here, so you shouldn't be able to be harassed, I would think. And I've got a third BC. Alright, I hope not. Way. Gotta get this, get this expansion up. Yep. Alright. I shall build us a defensive planetary fortress. Be wonderful. They are they are surprisingly good in these situations. Oh, planetary fortresses are wonderful like that. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, base is under oh, no, ah, surprise! <laughs> Turns out BCs kill Reavers quite fast. Hide under the battle cruiser. <laughs> All right, where's the second BC? I've forgotten where I I left it somewhere. I keep leaving battle cruisers lying around, it's terrible. Let's get another BC, there we go. Oh, the stalkers! Apparently, there's a barracks landed down there. Yes, that's interesting. Those Reapers should get cleaned up, I would think. Shouldn't be too bad. Oh, uh, Reaper versus Ultra. I wonder who wins that. Hmm, I can't imagine. Alright. Oh dear. Yeah, that's that's bad. That's actually really bad. I just lost a battle cruiser. We've got another one building. But you did Yamada a stalker, so I feel like we're the victor. Yeah, I, I, yes, yes it does. It's wonderful like that, isn't it? Alright, let's grab that refinery. I need to get a second star pot up so I can continue the BC production. I also need to get upgrades up for this stuff. Ship weapons. Two battle cruisers in defensive position. 
I need to not get caught out by the stalkers. There we go. Oh god, they're blinking under it. Focus fire on the stalkers. Don't lose it. Ah, too late. They can't kill another one though. It's okay. Build another BC. This is getting very, very unpleasant. They need to pull back immediately to our defenses. Oh god, they're focusing on my BC again. I don't think they can follow <laughs> me across the Sim City though, so it's okay. Oh no, that one Reaper killed everything. Oh, bollocks. It's alright, the Ultra Lists are in the fray. Where did the Reaper go? I think he died to an Ultra. Okay, cool. Okay, BC count is looking good. Right, I, I need to I need to be able to build more BCs. Okay, BCs now being produced from two starboards. Oh, then we can do some damage here. Battle cruisers operational. Moving in. I'm killing probes. Activate the Yamato cannons. Well, this is probably not the optimal way of killing them, but it's doing the job, so I don't mind. Oh, come on, Stalkers, just die. He's got like 2 2 upgrades. He's a cheat. Oh dear, those are unfriendly Stalkers, aren't they? Crap. Let's see if I can get my BC out of there. I killed most of this guy's workers, so. That's at least something. Reaper moving in. BC intercepting. Blasting those Reapers to pieces. More BCs. Oh lol, Brian is stream cheating. So of lame. course. So lame. It's all good. Another I have somewhere. killed the majority of their workers. Oh, that one has a lot of missile turrets. Stalker's moving in again, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, no, I may have enough PCs to see them off, maybe. SCV's optimal counter to Hellion. BCs, BCs. I'm sure I built another armory. I'm getting enough gas. I feel like our unit composition is working slightly against us. Do you think? <laughs> yeah, I'm having serious problems in terms of gas income. I need to expand again if possible. Stalker's coming in once again. Definitely not so good. I don't really have enough BCs to deal with that many stalkers. Damage to my battle cruisers. Ah, two two stalkers. It's almost as if these guys actually picked their unit composition specifically on what we were picking, like they were watching the stream or something. <laughs> Which, quite frankly, is a bit terrible. 
Oh, great. The Marines have come in now. Things are going horribly wrong. Should have probably let people know if we wanted tryhards that they could have gone to another game. Alright. I'm trying to see where I could possibly go to get gas. Not really anywhere. Needlist, you can do it. So many tryhards. Oh, your planter is. Oh, I guess that ultra killed all of them. Yep, planter is actually still alive. Just. Things are not looking good, I have to say. I feel like this amount of needlists can only take us so far. Oh yes, they, put, they picked the perfect unit counter to it, so there's not really a lot we can do at this point. I suppose is what happens when you watch the stream, but hey, there you go. GG! I don't think I've ever seen such a gas, gas intensive combination. Yeah, it was, was pretty, pretty terrible. Pretty hilarious. Alright, well, I think that I have got to go get ready for MLG. And uh, what, which tournament are you casting again that's coming up? The IPL? Uh, yeah, the IPL qualifier in the UK. Should be fun. Awesome, awesome. So uh, it is going to be a huge weekend of esports, it sounds like. So uh, yeah, definitely make sure to watch his, uh, the IPL, and then watch the MLG as well. As it, I, it's the finals, apparently. Damn right. I didn't realize until a couple weeks ago. So yep. that makes it even, even way more badass, is that there will be lots of money on the line. So that's always fun. Yeah, should be good. We shall see how it goes, and hopefully it will go very, very well. I expect epic games from both, and you can, w in fact, watch both. If you happen to be in for an entire day of StarCraft, the IPL will be on first, and then the MLG should follow straight up on that. Keep an eye on Team Liquid. That's the best place to look for those streams. It's all good, man. Husky, thank you very much for coming on the show, as always, and best of luck at MLG. Of course. Thank you for having me, and uh, I will definitely join you in future episodes if you want me but uh, it's a lot of fun and yeah. thank you for everyone watching and all that but uh yeah make sure to watch lots of starcraft this weekend i hope you guys don't have plans indeed i hope not and if you do cancel them my name's been total biscuit that was showcraft that was husky and remember next time you log into your starcraft 2 there's more to it than just the ladder so try out some new things i'll see you next time